Atlanta. Sure. Yeah. yeah. A lot of stuff. So I'll probably be going to Vancouver and then Atlanta, but. Where are they shooting? Van what are they doing in Vancouver? Um, Psych is in Vancouver. Oh, yeah. And um, USA has another show called uh, Barely Legal. Yeah, Barely, Barely Legal. Legal. Yeah, that's, they've offered that to me. Um, lots of other things are there. I haven't been there in a couple of years because I've that's been trying great. to stay in town. And I did the, the Disney Channel movie in Utah, so right. Salt, Salt Lake was kind of fun. Yeah. Three, three non-stops a day between Salt Lake and Palm Springs. You were doing that? Yeah. That's, yeah, well, you told me about that. That's great. Right. That was a great thing to have. Yeah. So yourself, you started off as a young filmmaker. I started off, I don't know how far back you want to go. Well, it's wherever yeah. you want to go. I wrote questions for game shows. Do you know about that? No, I did not know that. I wrote questions for game shows. It was one of my first jobs. And it was the kind of thing, everybody can do production. Right. And when you go into someone, I knew someone who knew someone. This is the way everyone gets a job. You know someone who knows someone right. who knows someone. It doesn't matter who they are, your dentist, your dentist's cousin. <laughs> so someone told me that they knew um, these people who worked at Goods and Todman game shows. Oh, wow. So I said, I'm going to go meet them. So I go and I meet this guy named Paul Alter, who's probably no longer with us, but was a director for them. Ah. And he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be in production. And he said, well, anyone can be in production. Can you write? And I went, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can write. So he told me to go write some sample questions, which I did, and then I got hired to write questions for a game show. Was it like a just? It was a show that was on the air for a little while yeah. called The Big Showdown. Okay. I also did some freelance work for Pyramid. So that's how you, that was your entrance into the TV work? I think I thought, well, I thought I was in television, yes. You, you were in television. I mean, um, but I'm not, not like you yeah. are now, but. No. <laughs> but I'm not the person who always wanted to be a director. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about TV, and I probably should have been an attorney. <laughs> so I said, I don't know anything about TV or film. How do they do that? How do they do this? So right. that's where I gravitated. Right. And again, you just if you're not going to film school, you're just trying to get any job you can get. Right, exactly. So I always looked around and said, Which, who's got a job that I think is more interesting than mine? <laughs> and then I said, I want to do that job. Right. Because after I did a little bit of writing, I got a job essentially as a booth PA on a, a videotape sitcom in New York. Okay. And then I saw in the, in the control room, which they really don't have anymore so much, the right. control room, here's the script supervisor, here's the associate director, here's the director. Right. So I was sitting over here and I thought, what's that person over there doing? I want to do that job. So ultimately I worked my way, and it happened pretty fast, I was very lucky. I got to be an associate director, and that job in videotape is basically setting up cameras okay. and editing. Huh. It's much different than an assistant director job in film. Right. So it was really a fun job. And then I thought, oh, well, what, I want this job next over right. there, and that's right. it. <laughs> um, and eventually I got to do that in video, but I wasn't really doing Episodic television, primetime episodic television, until I made a short. Okay. And so. I wrote and produced and directed this short film and shot it in my apartment in Santa Monica. Nice. And I got Jamie Lee Curtis to be in it. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. She was friends with someone I knew. Right. And I said, you think I could ask Jamie to be in it? She said, well, you just, all you have to do is ask. The tip, I mean, just the very yeah. common story. I mean, you're kind of like, we got to get something big on, on our show. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of everybody says that. I'm like, oh, I have a feature, but we have to have a big star in it. But here's what you learn. Actors like to act. Right. And if there's something in the script that they relate to. Absolutely. It's not about the money. And by the way, everybody told Jamie not to do this. It was six days of her life. Right. Maybe five, I don't remember. Maybe right. five shooting days, and, and maybe we had a table read. Right. Um, and they said, why would you do this? You know, they have no money, and you're shooting in her house, and what's she done? Right. But she thought it was either, either there was something interesting in the part or she just wanted to help someone who was starting. Right. Um, and it wasn't that big a deal out of her life. She was really helpful. Right. And because she was in it, I got people to watch. Absolutely. And, and it's very helpful, like you said, to have that name. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. These days, you need to have the name to raise money. Right, but even just kind of just guys starting, even if you had anything, I mean, just you have to have somebody there that somebody wants to watch. It's, yeah. you know. It's, a very, it's the same thing today that, you know, it's the same thing today. So that led to episodic TV? So I got someone, so I made this movie, Jamie was in it, and I got a couple of other people that people had heard of because Jamie was in it. Right. And again, someone who knew someone who knew someone that I knew got this short, yeah. Yeah, got this short film to a producer named Jay Tarsus. Okay. Who was um, from the Mary Tyler Moore 
family. Okay. I don't remember which of those shows he worked on, but he was doing this new show called The Days and Nights of Molly Dodd. Okay. And again, this is 20 couple of years ago. So um, I went to meet Jay, and he kind of looked at me and he said, uh, it's really good that you did this movie. I said, thank you. Yeah. And he said, uh, you want to do one of these? And I did, was there somebody, did some director walk in behind me <laughs> that he was talking to? So um, I, I said, yeah. yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. And it was a terrific show. It was when dramedies were just starting, single camera, half hours. Right. And it was very relatable to me. It was just about a single woman in New York, and I'm from New York, so, so I kind of identify with a lot of what she was going through. Right. And um, people watched it. And because I started on a good show, I then got to do a couple of other good shows. Wonder Years came after right. that. I, yeah, Wonder, was that your kind of it big was, moment that everything changed? That mo well, it was the first time I directed anything in prime time. Right, that's, yeah. So, and Wonder Years was yeah. the biggest show. And I think And you've had a lot of those the biggest shows on your belt. I, I, I have mean you've a, been kind of like time. right. Yeah, it started but it started good. It started with both That's of right. those those shows were a good place to start. Right. And um, people there were shows that were kind of had a little bit of buzz. Right. So if you have one of those on your resume and you're new, then producers and other people who are running shows say, Well, that's a good credit. Right. And I also, to be totally honest, I was there at a time when people needed to hire women. Mm. It was when the Directors Guild came out with their first study, like in 1988, okay. that showed that there were almost no women directors. You know, hey, here's Arlene. So it, it helped. Anything helps, right? I right. Mean, it is. I mean. But here's the other thing, and I've, I, I've said this to someone this week. I don't think I could get a job directing today if I were starting. It's much different. When Jay hired right. me, it was Jay Tarsus. He hired me. Right. I didn't meet anyone at the network. There was no studio. Right, there's... It was just, Jay said, okay, Arlene, you want to do one? Right. T today, at least, literally, at least five people have to approve you, and in, in some cases, it's 20. Yeah, and that's obviously the biggest difference nowadays, the divide between TV and, and film, and, and indie film, where like nowadays, guys can just pick up a camera, and they just keep going, and they have yeah. a thousand outlets of distribution for themselves and whatever, yeah. and TV is still the same mode for the most part. Well, certainly, um, I, guess, I guess even MTV and Nickelodeon, even the smaller cable stations right. are like that where you need to have someone's approval because sure. big budgets are, are involved. Right. But anyone can make a movie on the Internet and yeah, yeah. get someone, to, well, right now you do a thing on the Internet and the network will buy it as a TV show. Yeah. They seem to be doing that. Yeah, <laughs> they do, yeah. Um, it's all the time. What's the latest thing that I heard about that was... Oh, it's like a guy. Fred. 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 Like I, Fred. That thing's on loop at my house. Well, your kids I, are watching it. I'm like this. And who bought it? Nickelodeon? Or? Yeah, they made two Fred movies. Yeah. They made two Fred movies, and that's an internet sensation. And there's a lot of that. There's a lot of guys doing, there's another guy named Niga Higa that my daughter watches, uh -huh. and it's just this, this Asian kid from Hawaii that does all these little sketches, and he gets like 10 million views or more. 10 yeah. million views. Oh my God. It's insane. And, but also, YouTube finance, I mean, you basically, he gets a cut now. These guys on YouTube, they get pennies or whatever for but, every hit. But f Fred, you're saying that Fred, Same when thing. someone watches just him, like that too. somebody pays, he, gets, yes. he like, gets money every time someone's watching one of his videos. Because now YouTube places sponsor ads on their site. And are they making money? So YouTube They're is making, making a shitload of money. Yes. From and the, from so these, is Fred. From because, these sponsor ads. Because... Yes, and so is Fred because now he's <coughs> become the guy. And so now Fred gets money from Sprint or whatever who puts their little banner on his right, YouTube right. page because you've passed X amount of hits. I mean, I remember, you know, like, even Shoot to Hero, we had, I don't know, a couple hundred, 300,000 hits for our trailer. So they offered you to get paid for every hit above that or something like that. It's great. It's crazy. But I'm saying, like, it's so many outlets now. But also the numbers of people who watch on the That's internet, okay. because fifteen million. Seriously, hits. it's crazy. The the Disney Channel movie that I just did, seven million people, almost seven million people watched it on That's its a premiere. That's whole lot. Which is it's the highest rated cable movie of two thousand eleven. Wow. It Period beat, across the board. Seriously, it beat out. Um, up until that point, it was the Craigslist Killer. Oh wow! Lifetime. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, so almost seven million people watch it, which is and more. And that's Good Luck Charlie's. Good Luck Charlie, it's Christmas, Christmas movie. Yeah. And that just came out last week. Friday. 
Right. That was the premiere Friday. I think it probably Sunday. It had about four million people on Sunday. Right. And it will air for probably 15 more times in December. Now, are you now not exclusively, but you basically just deal with ABC? No. I mean uh, Disney. Dis no, I work for everybody. Okay, so it's not because I, I remember you on you know Housewives and. I, you were I on did, Desperate Housewives for quite a while. I did about nine episodes of Desperate, and I was also doing Boston Legal at the time. That was ABC. Just right. coincidence. Right. I did Medium, which was NBC. Right. Then it went over to CBS. Okay. Um, I've done a lot of things for ABC Family. Harry's Law is NBC. Okay. Um, Everybody loves Chris. Everybody hates Chris. Everybody hates Chris. Fox. Right. I pretty much so worked now you, for... So you've been across the board. I've worked for everybody. From writing questions... For tea, for a quiz. I can't say that that led to anything. I mean, ultimately, all of the other jobs, the, the associate director job gave me confidence that right. I could shoot anything. Right. But a short And you're film, editing as well, correct? Well, what, what, what you do is you, you need an associate director in the edit room with the, with the editor. So, yes, yeah, so basically. So you understood how to block yeah. the TV. Yes, exactly right. Right. Because what you do, and I remember this, I, I worked with Jimmy Burroughs one of the first times I was an associate director. Right. You know, the super comedy director. And what happens is after you've done the last run through of a sitcom, the associate director and the director would sit together and you'd go over the script and you go, okay, um, on this line, uh, camera one, give me this. And then over here, cut to two. And right. then camera two is going to be on a two shot and follow whomever to the next place. So right. you really get a sense of how to edit. Right. Because I saw you. I mean, I, you invited me to Gray's. That's right. You invited me to Gray's and I hung out. And for me, it was like I just hung out there because I've, I've never, I've never saw TV taped. And, you know, it was such a different experience because it was so technical and methodical. It but was that like was, boom, yeah. boom, boom. I mean, it was very, you know. But that was a. But you're also, you've been doing it forever, so right. you were running through. That was a single. That single was a, cam. A, a, probably, we probably shot two cameras at least. But it, right. it's not like being, have you been on a sitcom set? I went to, you also invited me to taping of women of a certain age. Were you there? I was there. I missed you. Yeah. Um, no, we said I was like. Right, I forgot about that. Right, so that's a whole other thing. That, it's right, a ballet. Pilot, yeah. That's there a ballet because you have the four cameras yep. moving all around and it's, it's really fun. It doesn't look as good as. Right, because you can't light for each setup. But yeah. Yeah. But it was still just boom, 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 boom. Yeah, you, do you What do you prefer? Um, do you like the sitcom? I, I, can't, I like to do a sitcom every once in a while, but only if it's funny. Here's the thing. Right. I started in sitcom. I mean, even though I made this single camera movie, right. and I, then I got Molly Dodd and Wonder Years, um, because there were more sitcoms. Right. And I also think at that time, single camera was a little more prestigious, mm. harder to get into, even though it pays less, but that's right. a sidebar. Um, <laughs> so, Go figure. Um, but as a director in multicam, you don't really have as much input, right. either in the script or, right. and what happens is you'll do a run through, and then 10 writer, producer, people behind you will come and rewrite everything and change everything. Right, and that's interesting for first time filmmakers coming out of film school, whatever, then they have their short, and they're like, okay, I want to get into TV, or I want, you know, they have a short, and I feel like sometimes they want to, which way they want to go, whether they have an inclination towards TV, or they have an inclination towards features, or webisodes, or whatever of understanding the difference between showrunners and writers on TV shows versus, you know, it's kind of, it's two different things. It's not primarily a director's medium. Right, it's a writer's medium. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I think a lot of people coming out don't quite understand that yet. They understand that it's like, it is a writer's medium and it is run by the showrunners. Right. And yeah, if you want to be in charge, you should make your own movies. movie. Right. I mean, I mean, it's, television is collaborative no matter what. Sure. So in most cases, except if you're Aaron Sorkin or J.J. Abrams or even Mark Cherry right. um, on Desperate Housewives, there's network people and studio people who, who basically have the final say over you. Right. And will come and look at a script and say, I mean, in fact, we had this on this show that I was doing um, a few weeks ago where the network was, came to the table read and by the time they get to the table read, they probably should know what's happening, but, but they didn't pay attention or for whatever reason, <laughs> yeah. something came up and they said, I don't, I don't think we're not in favor of this storyline. That basically had a three <sighs> or four episode arc. Ugh. So um, the writers first, they argue right. or they discuss and they say, but when we talked about it, this is what you loved about it. And then you're in your sales pitch. Right. And then they said, but we're, we're just, we're not, we're not comfortable with it. Right. So even though the writers loved the storyline and had 
plans for where it was going to go down the road, they were unable to do it. And basically they went into sort of crisis mode and said, well, we're shooting in eight days and we have to come up with a whole other storyline. Wow. So it, it's, it's oh. all collaboration of sure. some sort. Right. Um, but single camera in television, the um, director has more input. But, but the interesting, an interesting story about that is I was doing a show, I was doing an episode of Boston Legal. Okay. And one of the new producers who came in had come from sitcom. And she didn't really know how it worked. So when I started giving notes and rearranging some scenes because of, there was an imbalance in the act length. Okay. So I said, if they put this scene up here, then this act is more than four pages. Sh she was mortified. <laughs> Basically, like, w w why is that any of your business? Ah, I see. And it's right. part of the reason I left sitcom was because I felt like I didn't have a job. Got it. Right. So there you have it. Yeah. So all these years later, would you still give the same advice? I mean, like, that you did. You said, I want to do that. And you picked up, and you did your own little thing in Santa Monica, and you got an actor to come in on it. I mean, because it seems that now more than ever, I mean, I know we had a guest here, who sits on the board at Sundance, and they had 10,000 films they had to go through this year. They said it was insane. Yeah. And I said, is that because now more than ever, and she said it's because it's become a la mode. I mean, now before it was, it was cool to be like in a band. Now it's almost like cool to be a family maker now, and everybody's trying to do that, you know? And it seems that the way you started is very much the way everybody's doing it now as well. I don't know that I would, people who are making short films and coming out of film school, I think ultimately should not right away try to get into television. Right. I don't know that they'd find it as satisfying. Right. Um, it's just... It's, it's more, would you say it's more difficult, obviously, to get in? Because it's, 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 it's a... I don't know how more, anybody gets a job. Yeah. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I really don't. You I don't, still think it's networking, who you know? Well, you have to... Look who I knew. I knew someone who knew my dentist. I mean... Right. And I think that there's this thing now called observing. Mm where people who, are, who come from theater, who are theater directors, hang out on a set right. for a year and, and then right. hope to get one job. I know yeah, the networks have that internship program where you, you right. submit and you whatever, and you can be on set, and you have to go through the program. But, but that's okay. The ABC yeah. has one through the DGA. Right. Um, Disney, I think, also. That's not the same thing. You're talking about a There's two problems. They pay you. Wow. Just to observe. Right. They pay you decent money. I'm talking about people who don't get paid. And just go and on. And just hang, hang around hoping that someone will give them a job. That's tough. <laughs> you know, well, who can afford to do that? I have not, not, nobody I know. Yeah, really. <laughs> I'm slinging tacos. So there, yeah, there <laughs> yeah, you I go. Know. Yeah, it's tough, absolutely. Um, but I think, I think it's very hard to break in. Yeah. And um, what, what happens also now, and this is a lot of actors who are on shows want to direct them. Yeah. So the catch-22 is if it's a new show and you're a new director, you're not going to stand a chance. Right. If it's in third season, maybe they'll take a chance on someone. They'll do one. But by third season, all the actors want to direct and the writers want to direct. Right. And it's even tougher. Right. So I think, I think doing your own thing on the web, and a lot of writers I know who, are, who have worked yeah. are doing webisodes now. I see that. You know, I always say that, no, I have webisodes. And, it's still, it's still there. Like a year ago, they're like, oh, we're doing webisodes. And studios are doing webisodes. Networks are doing little webisode things. I'm like, how long is that going to last? But it's still lasted and it still keeps I going. I got a call from a couple of really talented writers that I met and with last it, month right? who said, we're going to shoot something in January. Would you direct it for us? And yeah. I said, if, if I'm not doing, anything. doing something else, love it. So what are you doing now? I What's am, next for you? Um, Harry's Law. Okay. Um, switched at birth. Pretty Little Liars. Okay. And I, those are the... Th there's a couple other things, too, that I'll probably go to Atlanta and I'll go to Vancouver to do this other thing. Awesome. So it's pretty good. Well, I appreciate you being on the show. and Happy to be here. Always been a great mentor to me. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Awesome. I'm Arlene Sanford. You're watching Short Showcase on PBS. <laughs>